Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Emma Sajida and it's so nice to see you again. I'm here today with Tiffany Lo, one of our senior supervisors at EAP. We are now in the final lesson on preschool games. In this lesson, you will be guided to teach your child to play the game of charades. There are different ways to play this game from very simple to more complicated depending on the abilities of the players. Let's charade away! Before that, it is important to understand some of the potential areas of challenge in this game so that we can later on determine the specific areas to break down and teach your child. First is understanding the writing on the piece of paper to act out. Then there's the whole part of actually acting it out, like what and how exactly to do so. Thirdly, understanding how to win the game, is it played individually or in a group, because whichever it is, has a completely different set of rules. That's just a summary, so how can this game be played? The very basic version of this game starts with a player picking out a piece of paper from a bowl, pre-written with a title or an object. Then using only hand gestures and body movements, the player acts out the word for the other players to guess. When the word is guessed correctly, the round ends and the next player starts the next round in the same way. An additional rule to the game would be to add in a time limit to the acting part. And another is to add in a point system which could lead to the players potentially becoming competitive. If the game is played by a big group of players, they are divided into two groups before they compete with each other for points and eventually win the game. Okay, so now, we need to assess if your child has the prerequisite skills to successfully learn to play this game. We hope that you have written the basic foundational skills on your notes because they are on the list, including receptive and expressive language, turn-taking, eye contact, social referencing. Reading abilities would be a bonus skill in this game, not to mention some basic yet beneficial social skills like flexibility, specifically in coping with changes, rejections, and ultimately with losing. Now, some important tips that were discussed for teaching any preschool game. And now we hope you have penned down key ABA strategies of breaking skills down, pairing learning with reinforcement, and providing sufficient practices. Then always ensure that you have all the relevant materials ready, which includes visuals like a social story, and rule cards with or without token boards would be essential. Video models would be a great teaching tool as well. These materials can be found on our website at www.autismathome.co. Some additional tips could include teaching your child some of the common hand signals used in this game by most people. First is to communicate the number of words. So for three blind mice, the player can show up three fingers at the start of the round to tell the other players the number of words written on the paper. Then it would also be helpful for them to communicate the length of the word. This can be done by spreading the thumb and the forefinger to communicate short words and stretching out both arms to communicate long words. You can also make up your own common hand signals to use in your games. If your child's receptive and expressive language is developing, consider simplifying the items in the charade card, like objects, animals, food, verbs, and most of which would have been taught through our Unit 17 on Building Language Part 1. And consider using picture and text combination on the charade cards instead of just text. Some of the other common categories in the charade cards include movie titles, movie characters, and song titles. So the basic roles involved in this game are the actor and the players. So the charade card is dealt out for the actor and no one else can see it. The expectation to teach the actor is to first read and understand the card, then to perform at least three clear and simple gestures to communicate the word while ensuring that they are not talking, not making any verbal sounds, and not pointing to anything or anyone either. The more actions they can act out, the better. And if they are playing in groups, more relevant actions can help their team score a point. Then there are the players whose main role is simply to guess. Sometimes the take turns rule is enforced, but it will be very difficult to get all the children involved to follow this rule consistently throughout the game. So you may find them shouting their answers to gain a point. In this game, we typically teach our children to play as the player 
first to guess the items. The main expectations are pretty straightforward. Sit nicely, raise hand and answer, and take turns. For the latter, only if this is applicable. Because the last thing we want our children to do is to get upset by trying their best to take turns to guess but all the other children are not. Hence making him lose the game repeatedly. Let's do a short pop quiz here. Your child is playing charades with five other children, so they split into two teams and both are pretty competitive. You find that your child can play well, but gets upset when his team can't make an accurate guess before the timer goes off, indicating the end of time to guess. But he tolerates well when this happens to the other team. And due to this, sometimes your child starts refusing to join this game. Which area of flexibility does your child need to learn to be able to be more successful playing this game? Coping with changes, coping with transitions, coping with rejections, coping with failures. The answer to this question is D. Perhaps your child has that need to always win competitions and is unable to tolerate losing either when playing individually or in a group. We suggest working on his general flexibility first, specifically in coping with failures. In terms of mastery criteria, you can do a straightforward 3 times 100% MT1 for correct guesses first, then perhaps do a 3 times 100% Gen 1 for generalization level 1, which mainly means getting the guesses correct in a generalized setting. Then, do a 3 times 100% MT2 for incorrect guesses through more difficult items on the charades card. The main goal is to get them used to getting wrong responses. Then do a 3 times 100% RR random rotation for both right and wrong guesses before a 3 times 100% generalized 2 step through generalization with adults for incorrect guesses. Finally, you can do the final gen step in group activities with other children. Always start by playing with one other adult first before increasing the number of adults in the game than other children one at a time. Once your child is able to play this game successfully with a group of friends, you can then teach them the other role and then follow the same breakdown. As for generalization, this will be a great activity for children to engage in at birthday parties, play dates, sleepovers, or even family game nights. Apart from guessing objects, you could spice things up a little by getting the children to act out characters from common children's movies like Elsa singing the Let It Go song from the movie Frozen. The important tip here is to ensure the charades cards include the famous movies and characters that your child is familiar with. And finally, it is your turn. Check your child's current skill set as well as overall flexibility to play charades. Plan the breakdown for this game more specifically determining the mastery criteria. Prepare all the learning materials and begin teaching. Well, that's it for this final lesson on preschool games ending with charades. We really hope these lessons have been helpful to you, your child and your family. And please do comment below if you've been able to follow along and it's been successful. Please do share with us your experience and also your feedback. We would love to hear them from you. Autism at Home is brought to you by The Hope Project, which is the non-profit arm of Early Autism Project Malaysia. All the content development, our clinical expertise and time is completely borne by EAP Malaysia and the production of these videos so far are funded solely through donations and fundraising. If you found these resources helpful and would like to contribute in some way, please do pledge a donation at autismmalaysia.com slash The Hope Project. Thank you for your support and with the amount of interest we have received online, we have actually started providing online services and currently working with clients in other states of Malaysia, Singapore, New Zealand, Philippines, Switzerland, Indonesia, China and Brunei as well. So do scan this QR code and get in touch with us if you want to find out more. If you haven't already, do check out our free online resource platform, Autism at Home, which has all the corresponding articles and downloadables for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on our Instagram and Facebook pages to stay updated. Thank you for watching and we will see you soon.